good afternoon. Well, it's, it's still afternoon. It's still afternoon, y'all. So good afternoon. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank y'all for tuning in for another episode. As you can see, I'm on the grind. And for good reason. Because life is chasing me down. Life is chasing me down. But guess what? I'm not the only one. Life is chasing all of y'all down. It's chasing all of us. We're all in a race. We're all playing a game. The game of life. So now, I read this book not too long ago, right? And it's also a YouTube video I watched. It's called The Game of Life and How to Play It. It tells us that life is a game we're playing. And a lot of y'all probably have felt that way yourself. Like, man, this is just one big game. And in any game, you win some and you lose some. And it seems like, especially to some of us, especially myself, it feels like I lose more than I win. Some of y'all can relate. But I want to tell y'all that it's not true. See, you might have lost. We're going to compare this to a football game. Since that's what most people can relate to, especially men, football. America's favorite, it used to be baseball, but I think it's football, not America's favorite pastime. We love football. So most of us understand how the game of football goes. But did y'all know that football and how it's played is just a reflection of life? That's why it's good, not just trying to make it to the NFL or something like that, but that's why it's good for young men or young women to play a sport, but young men to play football. Because it's not just about making it to the NFL or college or what have you. It's about teaching them how to play life. And how life is going to go. Life goes a lot like a football game. What you mean, Big Ward? I'm glad you asked. First, I want to say about this movie I watched a long time ago. It's called Crossroads, right? It's about this blues singer, Robert Johnson, who's supposed to sold him sold his soul to the devil down in Yazoo, Mississippi, at, at a place called The Crossroads. He sold his soul in order to become a great blues singer. And it didn't work out well for him. He, he ain't, it didn't work out the way he wanted it to. So, you know, when you deal with the devil, he ain't gonna never be straight up with you. He gonna always pull a wall from up under you. But anyway, it's a movie called The Crossroads, and Willie Brown was asked a question about while he, I think he would wake up sweating or whatever, and he was like, the hell hounds are on my tail. Well, I relate that to life. Life is on our tail. So you gotta keep running. You gotta keep moving. If you stop moving, if you sit down up under that tree for too long, cause every night that we do need a break, we need to get some rest, but we can't stop moving. We can't stop running. We can't stop playing, cause life is on our ass. Life is on our tail. Life is trying to get us out. Life is trying to beat us. So, now we're playing a football game. Life, football. Football, life. So, in a football game, you got first down. Y'all know the end goal. To score a touchdown. But not just one touchdown, but as many as you can. You got to keep scoring as many touchdowns as possible because most likely your opposition 
the other team is going to score a touchdown too. So most likely, unless you got the best defense ever, nine times out of ten, you ain't going to shut your opponent off, especially life. You're not shutting life out. It ain't going to be no shut out. As a matter of fact, life going to win. The goal in this game is to score as many touchdowns as you can. We're not going to win. We're going to get that understood right now. You're not going to, life is undefeated. Life doesn't lose. But the objective here is not to win, but to score as much as possible. Scoring is certain goals that you set in your life. Like they call football, when you score, you cross the goal line. Scoring in real life is when you set a goal and you achieve it. So you're feeling like you're a loser. You're feeling like you're not accomplishing that. You're feeling like you're not doing anything in life because you haven't, like me and most people at some point, I have goals now, but do you really have any goals? Most likely, nine times out of ten, most people don't even have any goals. We're just going along to get along. Get up every day, go to work, get off, pay bills, repeat the process. We don't have any goals set. So therefore, you're going to always feel like you're losing because you ain't got nothing to gauge yourself against to show that you're actually winning. You're actually winning, even when you think you're losing. Because, like, in a football game, you're going to have some good plays and you're going to have some bad plays. But the end objective is to get to the goal or goal line. On the way to the goal, a goal line, we're going to equate it to goal line, football, touchdown. Goal in life, accomplish it, touchdown. Follow me. You have to set goals in order to gauge your progress in life. And just like in football, on the way to that goal, you got an opposition trying to, the defense, which is life, trying to keep you from achieving that goal or crossing the goal line to score a touchdown. Life is in the way of you and your goal. As in the football player, the best players get the most love. The best players are the ones that are determined to reach that goal line, no matter who in front of them. No matter what the defense looks like, the best running back, the best quarterback, you name it, their main objective is no matter what, I'm getting to that goal line. I'm not going to let one man tackle me. I'm not going to let two men tackle me. That's the mindset they have. The best running backs, the Emmett Smiths of the world, the Barry Sanders of the world. You're not going to stop me from getting to my goal line. Now, every now and then, on most plays, not, not every now and then, on a lot of plays, Emmett Smith might get tackled for a loss. Barry Sanders got tackled for a loss. In life, sometimes you're going to get tackled for a loss. Sometimes you just have to be happy with gaining three yards. You're not going to break a long run every time you get the ball. I don't care who you are, Bear Sanders, Emmett Smith, you name it. They didn't break a touchdown every time they got the ball. And neither were you in life. Sometimes in life, you got to be happy with that two-yard game. Sometimes in life, you got to be happy with getting four yards. Then three yards. Then you might break off for 10 yarder. Then you might break to the outside for 30. And then after you done done all that, you might be in the red zone, getting ready to score a touchdown, and you might fumble the ball. I have to start all the way over again. But guess what? That's what you're going to have to do. Because the game, even though you done fumbled in the red zone, We've seen in football, just like in life, that don't mean the game is over. That play is over. 
Life has a series of plays. Every day we wake up, we run in plays. First down, three yards, five yards, fumble, interception, touchdown. Sometimes we're going to score a touchdown. We're going to cross that goal line. And then guess what? Just because you crossed the goal line, the game still ain't over. Now you got to punt the ball or kick the ball off and do it again. The game ain't over. Just because you may have fumbled the ball, which has lost your job, you may have gotten sacked in the backfield, which means you went through a divorce and lost all your possessions in the divorce as a man. Or you might have gotten a three to four yard game. That means you just got a job. It don't pay a lot, but it pay enough for you to survive and take care of your family. Then you want to apply for another job that pays better. And you got that job. First down. Feel me? You got the first down. Then, something happened. Your car broke down or whatever. You couldn't make it to work. You end up losing your job that you just got. In other words, you fumble again. It happens in the game of life. It happens in the game of football. What do you do? You get up, dust yourself off, get ready for the next play. We got four quarters of football. What do they say in the football game? You got a, the best college football coach of all time, in my opinion, the best coach of all time, Nick Saban, will say we got full 60 minutes that we play. We don't play five minutes. Whatever happened within the first five minutes, that don't determine the whole game for us, the champions. The champions play for the full 60. Because the champions know within, th within that game of football and within that game of life, you're going to have fumbles, interceptions, sacks, tackle for loss, getting tackled for loss. First down, three-yard games, four-yard games, 30-yard games, 60-yard pass reception, touchdown. You're going to have all those things happen within that one game, within that one four-quarter session called a football game. However many quarters we have in life, we're going to have the same thing. In life, we're going to have first down, Three-yard gains, four-yard gains, three-yard losses, four-yard losses. Interceptions, fumbles, and touchdowns. Keep that in perspective. When you may have been, went through a phase right now, you just fumbled the ball. You ready to quit like the game over. It's just the first quarter, baby. The field was wet. The ball was wet. It slipped out of your hand. Stuff happens. Hold your head up, dust yourself off, go back to the sideline, get ready for the next play. Get ready for the next series, because the next series is coming. You got to be able, the same way the best football players are able to forget about the next play. That would tell a quarterback when he throw an interception. Forget about that play, get ready for the next play. Forget about the last play. You got to be able to forget about you just threw an interception. It happens. Get back out there. Try to throw a touchdown next time. And if you fumble the ball after you just threw an interception, because it happens. The best quarterbacks of all time, Peyton Manning, I done seen Drew Brees, my favorite quarterback for my favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Drew Brees threw four interceptions in one game. And guess what he did? Kept throwing. Regarded as one of the best quarterbacks ever. Joe Montana. Four interceptions, one game. So forth, so on. Tom Brady. 
considered the best quarterback of all time. Seen him throw four interceptions in one game. What did he do? Keep throwing. Going down in history as the GOAT. Drew Brees is my favorite, but Tom Brady is the best ever. I just seen him throw four touchdowns, not touchdown, interceptions in one game. And kept throwing like he ain't throw now an interception. I just seen Tom Brady come back from numerous games where they was behind, down, and it was over with, come back and win. I call him the assassin. That is not the guy you want to have the ball against with a minute and something left on the clock. And they down by three or four points. Game over. Nine times out of ten, you know, no matter how rough a game Tom Brady done played, how bad he done played, you know, as a football fan, even if you hated Tom Brady, you if you were playing against him, y'all was up by four points, it's a minute and five seconds left on the clock, and they got the ball, Tom Brady driving, you scared as hell. Because you know nine times out of ten, no matter how bad he done played throughout the game, He's going to bring the Patriots back and beat y'all. Because he played the full game. He don't let the fumbles, the interceptions, or none of that stuff he done did during the game stop him from finishing the goal. Which is to be the last one to cross the goal line with the most points at the end of the game. Same thing with life. Some of us right now are losing. Some of us right now have fumbled the ball. Thrown an interception. Got sacked. But you can't forget that if you're still alive, that means the game's still being played. Your game of life is still being played. So you can't stand around. You can't afford to sulk. Hold your head down. Walk around and feel sorry for yourself because you just lost your job. You just lost your wife. You just lost your husband. Your mama just died. Your daddy just died. You Whatever didn't happen. But you didn't die. You still here. So your game of life is still being played. So therefore, you got to suit up, tighten them cleats up, put your chin strap back on, and you got to go back out here and try to cross this goal line. Goal line. See the correlation? In life, you must set goals and strive to achieve them. Whether it be small goals, weight loss goals, I need to lose three pounds this week. I want to lose 10 pounds over the summer. Set that goal and go for it. You're going to have setbacks, stumbles, fumbles, interceptions, three-yard losses, all that on the way to your goal, whatever your goal may be, whatever your touchdown may be. But as long as this game still going on, we're going to continue to do what we got to do, fight, claw, scratch. If it ain't a two yard here, one yard here, three yard here, touchdown. Either way, we're going to score that touchdown. We're going to achieve that goal. Whether it be your college education, trade school, making more money to support your family, lose some weight for your health, whatever the goal line is, we're going to cross it. If it ain't but one yard at a time, five yards at a time, even if we just fumble, even if we just throw the interception, we still got to keep on fighting until we get across that goal line. Get it? Got it? Good. Touchdown. Bye.